one, I believe everybody makes their own future. Uh, and maybe one key lesson is to recognize opportunity when it knocks and then put out the effort to take advantage of that opportunity because things can happen where uh, a door may open and it may open for a short period of time and you can decide do I want to go through that door or do I let that door close and then wait for another door to open and I think this happens to everybody all of the time throughout your life and it's just up to you to decide which opportunity do I want to spend my effort pursuing and, and I think that that minor blips in our economy like we're having now may close some doors but it provides a wealth of, of fascinating events that you could uh, make into completely new opportunities. Going into space is just setting your mind that this is a, an option I want to pursue and then you roll up your sleeves and you do the work and, and you don't take no for an answer and you keep knocking on the door and in my case I had to knock on the door four times before it cracked open and I was able to shove my foot in the crack and then they couldn't close it anymore and I snuck in. Uh, being invited to come and give a commencement address, uh, that's just, you know, I never thought that anything like that would happen. You know, that's a flair that I got when I was here, I think, at Oregon State University. At least I had a number of professors here that really inspired and catered to whatever innate ability I have. They didn't squelch, they didn't squelch the, the uh, uh, innate uh, curiosity of being able to turn over stones and look at all the creatures that were scampering around underneath it. And, and I continue to do that all my professional career, including uh, on my space flights. And For this commencement address, it's not about me and what I've done, it's about the students and their future. So I'm not going to talk about anything about me. I'm going to talk about my view of the future for uh, where all these bright-eyed students can dash off and, and carve their own niche out. But, but, but space is, it's an amazing place. I, it's interesting to look at Earth in a perspective that uh, you don't get to typically see. Uh, people come back from space saying, oh, Earth is beautiful from space, which it is. But I, I like to point out that Earth is no more beautiful from space than viewing Earth from Earth. It's just different. It's a different perspective that we're not used to seeing. And, and so you may be a little more enthralled with the views from orbit just because they're new, but, but you, look, you look at the Cascade Mountains here, and they're gorgeous. The, the Oregon Cascades are just amazingly beautiful mountains. They're also beautiful from orbit. Crater Lake looks like this blue eye looking back at you. Um, again, beautiful, but Crater Lake, from the rim of Crater Lake, is also beautiful, so it's almost how many fairies could dance on the head of a pin, you know. Which is more beautiful, Crater Lake from its rim or Crater Lake from orbit? 